Hi, Mises. I thought I would come on because I haven't been on in ages and realize I'm losing the discipline of showing up live, embracing the discomfort of being seen and just, you know, talking and ranting and trusting that I'm going to be able to show up with something valuable and inspiring and helpful for you. Mises. So what's been happening in my world? I've just finished um, an art fair and I'm coming down from it still two weeks out and then slowly approaching school holidays. And so all the things that I've planned um, is coming up and I always try and plan a little bit of a gap in between because just need to declutter everything, get rid of all that energy of being like on all the time, it was really intense, being away from my kids. And then at the same time, ramping up for the next project. Um, and I've always found from my experience that when you have a project coming up next, that's how you keep the momentum going. That's how you stay connected to your creativity. And that's how you can stay inspired and don't lose the magic that you had when you had a big event that you've been working on for a while. Um, and it also kind of helps with the after after event blues, they call it. Like after an exhibition, there's always this kind of hangover. And I don't like having that hangover. And I'm still practicing and getting better at it. But I've, as I've learned, the only way I've really found that's really helpful is A, to plan to have projects after and to keep going in that way. But at the same time, B, to plan for some downtime so that you don't burn out, so that you don't um, forget to look back and learn from the lessons as well as celebrate what's happened and that's what I've been trying to do as well and enjoying this kind of downtime but also this planning time which is my favorite and this is why I offer uh, mentoring and stuff because I love big picture planning and strategizing and thinking up new ideas and really just getting into the juices of creative possibility and um so what I want to come up while I'm doing waiting for school run, I've got a couple of minutes, well not 10 minutes at least, um, is to talk about, there's this phrase that I've been trying to work out what it is trying to say or something about desires and disciplines and because I was getting frustrated about feeling like I was losing my disciplines, um, you know, why can't I wake up earlier? I wanted to do more journaling time. I really wanted to really nut out some, um, kind of planning but also a lot of mindset blocks and a lot of just working out the big picture that I'm trying to create in my mind and I think everything's shifting and I'm dreaming a bit bigger and so it feels uncomfortable and you just need some alone time to do that and my kids are waking up earlier and it's like oh why can't I do that or um, this whole practice of trying to really look after my body and um, the discipline of actually moving my body as opposed to just sitting there thinking all the time because that's what I'm comfortable with even though I'm losing that discipline or like really decluttering and reorganizing my whole studio because I was feeling like oh I need to like rearrange the whole thing I want to paint bigger and um and then in my and I got this kind of phrase where it's like your desires aren't matching but it didn't quite work it, it didn't articulate what it is and I just had it this morning where it's just like your desires will determine what your disciplines are going to be and I'm like no but my desire is to be the kind of person that wakes up early and have like an hour to myself and but I realized no actually my desire for comfort and sleeping in and just laying there because I haven't had enough sleep was obviously greater and so the discipline to then stay and ignore my phone which has the alarm has become a discipline and that's a discipline that matches the desire. Does that make sense? And I wonder too then for people who I meet who are makers or creatives or they want to do more, like I meet designers who are like me and they're working for other people or you've been making something for a while but you want to like bring it to the next level and they look at me and they're like, oh, you know, you're just so amazing, you have two kids and you're able to do all this stuff at the same time. You know how I, I, they obviously feel like they can't do it because obviously I'm like some magic, really disciplined person and that is a bunch of crap because that's not true. <laughs> um, you know, I've had many days where I'm like, crap, there was one time where we, we couldn't make lunch because we were running late and so she had to do a canteen lunch and I'm still trying to wrap my head around this whole new schedule and I realized there's some things that I've made into habits or disciplines like being able to show up in my studio and do paintings because I have an art fair coming up or because I have an exhibition coming up or because I wanted to release a collection of paintings in three months as opposed to six months back in the day when I didn't have kids. Um, I paint more now than with children and less time than I did when I didn't have any kids. And so where is that discipline coming from? And I realized 
the discipline came from this deep desire to really have this thing, whatever that is. And so for a lot of people, the, they say they have the desire, I want to bring my work to the next level. I want to actually sell it. I want to actually write the book. I want to, you know, sell my work. I want to put myself out there. I want to actually create art that's just for me. And yet they're not doing it. Hi, Leslie. Hi. I haven't talked to you in ages. Um, and yeah, so talking about this desire, right? We all have these desires, we all recognize it, but I wonder if the desire is big enough because if you're still finding yourself going, oh, Brenda, you're amazing, and I'm like, um, I'm the same as you, uh, the reason I was able to do the things that people are admiring me for, like you're admiring me for the ability to be able to create art even though I had a baby at home and like a newborn and had zero sleep and um, I made this art fair and I you know, painted five new paintings along with a whole bunch of other paintings in the last two months, which is like, so many if you've seen the size of my paintings and the intricacies of my paintings and how do i do that while with school runs and this whole new school thing um and the reason was because my desire to really be a prolific painter was one of the core things that i really focused on last year and that overrode my desires for comfort and laziness and just enjoying myself and taking my time and and basically um allowing my excuses to talk and the other thing I'm realizing as I'm saying this is that the discipline doesn't last very long. You have to have discipline while you're building basically a habit um, and building basically a new identity. So a lot of the time I'm talking to these people, like I met at the art fair, who are like, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing. And I'm like, well, then you just have to like go out there and do it. And it's so easy isn't it? To hear people go, you should just go out there and just do it. You say you want to paint, go out there and paint. Or you say you want to sell your work, well, you know, find this free websites. We have social media. Everything is so easy and available to us now. And you could just go out there and do it. But why aren't you doing it? It must be because your desire isn't big enough and that doesn't feel quite true because like my desires, my ambitions, my vision is really big. But I think because my fear and my fierce and resistance speaks in excuses and reasons why I can't do it or because I'm not good enough, not perfect enough. And I don't recognize that as a desire, but that desire for comfort and security and not to be rejected and that desire for not being hurt and that desire to avoid pain and discomfort really in general and imperfection um, and safety. It's, it's a desire in itself. And if I could see it as a desire, then I can choose which desire I wanted. But that desire isn't good enough either. It isn't enough because the desire helps you lead to your discipline, the discipline of going, you know what, I'm gonna, the discipline isn't waking up early or like just fucking doing it. The discipline is to be able to embrace the discomfort of doing something scary. The discipline is actually being comfortable with being uncomfortable with showing up and, and making an offering and nobody giving a shit or people rejecting you or you know, you're standing there with your artwork literally and people just walking by and like, and you know, making faces. Although <laughs> like you could, I could see it, my art when I'm standing there at my stand with my artwork and people are walking by and they're just like, oh. And I totally let it, let it go because it doesn't affect me because I've changed my identity around my artwork. And so this is all getting like really big now. I was just talking about discipline and desires, but is it's gone from the desire, which makes the discipline. The discipline allows you to create the habit, but more than that, it, be, it creates a whole new identity. I had to move from being a designer who always wanted to paint and got that desire to really want to paint. And I became a painter because I went, no, I really want to paint. And that desire got stronger and I developed the habits for it. And then when I became a mom, I was like, well, how do I become a mama and a maker and an artist? I had to then change that desire to be like, no, I want to be an artist that is more than just a mom and that's where the Muse Mama membership thing came from because I wanted to really share all of that and that really then helped me create the discipline of like I had to make artwork on my kitchen bench and embrace imperfection. The discipline was to again embrace the imperfection right I couldn't have the perfect studio I couldn't have the perfect amount of time I am rushing now I've got ten, five minutes I had to embrace um, the discomfort of showing up of asking people would you like to buy my work and I've never had that before I've always worked in design people already paid you and then you produce the work you know like an employee where you're already paid and then you just fulfill the thing that you've been paid for but as an artist you have to make your thing that's from you and then bring it out to the world and then ask would you like this um, 
And because I embrace that, I then create this identity where I'm an artist and this is what I do. And then at the same time, beyond that, to get into the art fair and stuff, I had to, the desire was to really show my work in person and to override the discomfort of logistics and leaving my babies behind and being uncomfortable in a new state and, and like trying to work it out and then put it up and physically be there and physically stand there and, and you know, like see people feedback like in real time about my work right but because i built that discipline not only as an identity as an artist but i was well as well as recognizing that i'm an artist regardless of what people say and that my art is beyond me right and that just the desire went from the desire to the discipline to this identity where as an artist I create the work but the work is no longer about me and it is um oh hi Anita um thank you for saying that I'm doing well um but yes that the art is beyond me and therefore it isn't something I can take personally so when people don't like my work it's not because they don't like me and I could take it personally and then totally get feel crushed um at the same time I then because if I want to really embrace that I guess it's a, a kind of rejection. I also don't take when people praise my art too personally either. Like it feels good, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, it's now beyond me. My identity as an artist to keep creating the work, but the art, once it's done, goes out there. Wow, this is like gone beyond what I originally wanted to say. But for you, I really want to hope, I really hope that the value that you take from this is to really ask yourself, when you feel like, oh, why can't I be that person? I'm not good enough yet, you know, and getting really frustrated at your lack of discipline is to look at what your true desire is, what it is that's keeping you from it. And usually there's another desire that's keeping you safe. And that's sometimes called fear. It's resistance. It is this desire for safety, for no pain, for comfort. And then to ask yourself that question, could you make the desire to achieve the thing that you want to achieve, to do the thing that you want to do, to finally put something out there or to whatever that thing is, it's like the thing, could you make that desire greater than the desire for comfort and safety and um, no pain? And the only way to do that is to recognize when you can really make that desire bigger and you go, I want this, I really want this. Then you will be able to find a discipline to do it. But also know that the discipline is not good enough. It's not going to be sustainable. The discipline is only there to help you embrace the discomfort, embrace the pain of being you know, rejected or all that kind of stuff of any growth. So that you can build the habit of doing it and then eventually it doesn't feel like a discipline anymore and it becomes who you are. So the goal is, and I hope that you feed into the desire to really spark this journey, that who is it that you're going to be at the end of it? Because then I mean, that will never end. There'll be a new desire, there'll be new goals and then you become more and more of the kind of person that you want to be and at the same time become who you've always wanted to be and who you were always meant to be. Um, so yes, I've got two minutes. I hope that that was valuable. Like, it does that make sense? Definitely comment below with heart emojis if you're like, oh my God, that totally makes sense. I really need this. Um, if you have any questions, drop them below. And tell me, what is that thing that you've been feeling frustrated at yourself about? If you're like me and you're in my circle, yeah, you're probably like me where you're like, you get days where you're just like, oh, why can't I just do the thing? And it keeps bugging me. And the fact that it keeps bugging you means that there is a desire there. There's a spark there, but there is another desire that is probably greater and that you're not acknowledging because you see it as a block or as something you have to work on or as a you know emotional baggage or as fear but what if that's just another desire and so when you recognize that as a desire then you can release it and go no actually i no longer desire that because this desire to be more to show up more to create the art to be the artist is greater oh thanks for saying that leslie valuable that's my goal um, drop them below, think out loud, just like I'm doing now. I had no idea this was going to go beyond the whole desire discipline thing to identity, but this is what happens when you speak it out loud, when you write it out loud, when you try to articulate all this intangible in your mind and as creatives and as muses, that is what you have. You get inspired, you get things, you notice, and the only way you can really form it into artwork to something that you can articulate, something that you can then make beauty and wonder and art from is to really bring it out in some way even if it's still messy is to write it out 
put in the comments and I can I'll come back after this um, school run and like talk it out with you. And before I go, always, um, the current project that I'm always working on is my News Mama membership. If this is something that you've always loved to explore your creativity and you know that the heart of what you want to do and the next thing, the next chapter, that thing, the next level is something to do with your creativity. Muse Mama is the village where I gather all my resources. There is in there now two courses, Deliberate Doodles and Creative Creativity Catalyst, where it's really about sparking your creativity. And I've just realized in my journaling, which is why I always um, recommend this to my muses, is to that there's the creative spark and that's really to find your way, to find the spark, find your connection. The next level from that, well not next level, there's a different version of that is you're finding your muse mojo voice, is to find your creative voice and to really deepen that conversation with your art. And then the, another level from that is your muse mojo pro, your like creative pro, being a pro. And that's when you're really exchanging your work with the world and that's the work that you do that you're being called to do to change the world it, it's not leveling up in that way because art isn't like that linear but those are the three levels that i'll be exploring and creating resources for inside news mama i am super excited for this year what's coming up next month is going to be about because it's school holidays and totally worked out in that timing um about weaving your mamahood with your creativity and what that looks like um and how to do all that it'll be all inside me's mama there'll be fun stuff on the front lines live on my page as always so if you're here welcome uh definitely make sure you put me on a notifications list and um if you want that link let me put that in now i've got to go because the bell's gonna ring let's see can i pin this how do i pin this oh well i will work it out later um otherwise if you want one-on-one -on -one access with me, there is Muse Messenger Magic where we can really chat one-on-one. -on -one. You can have me, my eyes, my perspective, my experience, my kind of intuition on your project. It is four weeks so that we can like really get deep but short enough that we can really just get the spark going, get you kind of going and then there'll be ongoing, if you want an ongoing, bigger um what do you call it, package to work with me, we can discuss it then. But this is Muse Messenger Magic. Message me about that for details. It is like less than a coffee a day, really, uh, unless you like super fancy coffee. Uh, less than a coffee a day, but we you will have one-on-one -on -one access to me on Messenger where we basically talk about your muse, your creativity, what your project's trying to do, what it is, that, especially if you're fighting resistance. And I'm actually really good at seeing the bullshit because I've probably been there, your excuses, um, as well as what is it that you're truly desiring and how to find a discipline to do it and how to then really move that and becoming part of your identity. And so message me for that information on that if that's what you're looking for. Otherwise, there's the Muse Mama stuff. You can join the village. That's the most um, affordable way to just kind of be in my circle of influence. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Thank you for being here. I hope that that was valuable. Definitely drop your comments below and your questions below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.